Today, we're diving into something super cool, load balancing with Python and Flask. If you've ever wondered how big websites handle millions of requests without crashing, or how traffic is distributed across multiple servers, then this video is for you. We're going to build our own simple load balancer using Python and Flask, and I'll explain everything step by step. So grab your coffee and let's get started. All right, so what exactly is a load balancer? Imagine you're running a website and suddenly thousands of users start visiting at the same time. If you have just one server, it might crash because it can't handle all the traffic. That's where a load balancer comes in. A load balancer acts like a smart traffic manager. Instead of sending all requests to one server, it distributes them across multiple backend servers. This way, no single server gets overloaded. If one server goes down, others can take over. It makes the system faster and more reliable. In this video, we'll build our own Flask-based load balancer that distributes requests among multiple backend servers. Let's see how it works. This is a simple Flask app that responds with a message saying which port it's running on. Let's break it down step by step. First, we import Flask to create our web server. We also import OS, which helps us read environment variables. Now, here's the cool part. We define a route at slash, so whenever someone makes a request, this function runs. Inside the function, we check the port environment variable. This tells us which port the app is running on. Then we return a response like, hello. This response is from port 501, or whichever port is being used. Finally, at the bottom, we check if the script is being run directly, read the port number from environment variables, defaulting to 5000 if not set, and start the Flask app on 0.0.0, .0 making it accessible to other devices on the network. Now to prepare our setup for the load balancer, we need to run multiple instances of our Flask application on different ports. To do this, I opened a command prompt and set the port variable to 5000, then started the Flask server. Next, I opened a second command prompt, set the port to 5001, and launched another instance of the server. Finally, I repeated the process in a third command prompt, setting the port to 5002 and starting yet another instance. Now, we have three separate Flask servers running, each listening on a different port. Let's move on and build the load balancer. This Flask application acts as a reverse proxy that distributes incoming requests to different backend servers. Let me walk you through how it works. First, we define a list of backend servers. These are the Flask instances we started earlier. We also keep track of which backend server to use next with the current backend variable. This helps us implement a round robin algorithm, meaning we send each request to a different server in order. When a request comes to the load balancer, it selects one of the backend servers from the list. It forwards the request to that server using the requests library. If the request is successful, it returns the response from the backend. If the selected backend is down or unreachable, it returns an error message instead. After each request, it updates current backend to point to the next server in the list, ensuring fair load distribution. Finally, the load balancer itself runs on port 3000, meaning all traffic will go through it before reaching any backend servers. Now let's run it and see how it distributes the traffic. I opened a new command prompt and started the load balancer by running the script. This launches our Flask app on port 3000, which means any request sent to this port will be automatically forwarded to one of our backend servers. To test it, I sent multiple requests to localhost 3000, and here's what happened. The first request was forwarded to port 5000 and returned a response. The second request went to port 5001 and responded accordingly. The third request hit port 5002 and sent back its response. Then it cycled back to port 5000 and continued in order. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more awesome tech content. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching in the next one. Until then, keep coding and keep learning.